Good morning, guys. So today I would just want to get straight into what I'm working on this weekend. I noticed last week that I had a bunch of cherry tomatoes here that I forgot to process with the rest of my tomatoes. Please ignore the big freezer mess going on in the background as well. That's on my to-do list for this weekend too, is to get that all cleaned out and organized. So I'm going to go ahead and pull these out. And we're going to be making sauce out of these today because I don't fancy sitting there and picking the skins off of each of those individually. So first I'm just going to get them into a giant stock pot and cook them down a bit. I did add a little bit of water just so that it wouldn't burn onto the bottom of my pot. I'm going to be water bath processing these today. So I went ahead and got my canner out, got it all set up, and I got out two tools that will be really helpful today a strainer for our tomatoes, and an apple slicer core for our apples that I'll be processing. For the apples here, I've gotten out a cold bowl of water and I'm adding some lemon juice to it. So that way when I add my apple chunks, they don't start to brown while I'm in the process of getting them all chopped. And as you can see here, this apple slicer and peeler is annihilating my apple. It just completely devoured it. These are Cortland apples. I ended up having a snack out of it. <laughs> uh, they were, the flesh was too soft. It was the, like, I've never used these for canning before. And I got them at the Black Barn because I just saw them there and I wanted to try them out because it said they were good for baking. And I thought, oh, they'll be, I'm sure they'll be good for canning then. Uh, no, not exactly. Like we, we, I did eat a couple of them fresh and I was very excited to use them at first because the flesh is so white and so dense. It's like you could compare it to like the angel food cake of apples. That's like the texture of it. It's like really dense and nice. And I thought that they would work well for processing, but unfortunately I had to sit here and hand peel and chop all of these. Since I had a lot going on over on my stove, I went ahead and got out my extra electric burner and started to add in all the ingredients that you would need to make the syrup for these cinnamon apples. I thought that this year it would be nice to do cinnamon apples instead of a recipe for apple pie filling because I wanted to be able to use this for a side for dinner and not just a dessert. And I figured with a, a cinnamon apple recipe, it's basically just a less thick apple pie filling. So if I really wanted to get some apple pie out of this, I could just open up a jar, put it on the stove, warm it up and add some thickener, like some cornstarch or something. So here I'm just filling all my jars up. I decided to do one quart jar. I know I have two quart jars out here, but I, I ended up not having enough to fill that one. So I filled up two more half pints instead. And I have one quart jar that I'm using and that'll be for apple pie because typically it takes about a whole quart to fill a, an apple pie cavity. So I will be experimenting with that to see how well turning it into apple pie works because I like when I can get more than one product out of something that I've canned. After getting all the jars filled with hot syrup, I went ahead and debubbled them and then wiped the rims off with a little bit of vinegar got the lids on and into the canner to process at a rolling boil for 35 minutes. I did have something very weird happen this go around with canning here. I'm trying to can my quart jar, but it started floating on me. So I, I put a weight on the top of it to see if I could weigh it down. I have never had a canning jar float before. Not like that. I had no idea what was going on. I was actually getting ready to look up what was going on here. And I saw somebody had posted in one of the canning groups on Facebook that I'm in that sometimes they float if the apples have too much air in them and cooking them down before processing should fix that issue. So here I'm just throwing in all of the apple scraps that we had from today and the leftover liquid that I had from soaking the pieces since I don't wanna waste that. I'm gonna go ahead and add more water to this on top of that and I'm going to boil these pieces down into like a watered down apple juice because I'm going to make some apple jelly. Every time I process apples, I make apple jelly. And that's primarily what we eat on our peanut butter and jelly sandwiches at my house is apple jelly because it is so delicious. And why go to the store and buy grape jelly when I have something just as good that I've homemade on my shelf through scraps that I've had. Now I've moved on to scooping in the tomatoes 
that I've been cooking down into my tomato strainer. And basically what this thing does is you turn the knob around and around and around and it's got like a spiral on it that shoves the tomatoes through a mesh. So that way the meat goes through the bottom, but the skin and seeds remain on the top for you to get out later. Now with mine, I think because they were cherry tomatoes, there were quite a few of the seeds that were coming through the mesh. I think it's because they were like really super small. So I did end up straining this a second time through a smaller sieve just to make sure that it was nice and smooth. I did put it back on the stove after this just to let it cook down for about another two hours to make sure that my sauce was a little bit thicker because it was a little too thin for my liking. Keeping up with not wasting anything from food processing, I'm going to go ahead and take the pulp from these tomatoes and get them dehydrated to turn into a powder. Once the apple scraps were soft enough, I went through and I mashed them just to be sure that I was getting as much juice as I could from them. After a while, my tomato sauce was done and I did taste a little bit of it and it tastes exactly how I remember. Now, I've never made my own tomato sauce before today, but I used to be a caregiver and I took care of a client who liked to can a lot. And I was going to make something for dinner and way at the back of the cupboard, I found a, the last can of homegrown tomato sauce that he had. And I don't know what year it was from. It didn't have a date on it, but I asked him, I was like, what is this? He's like, oh, that's, that's tomato sauce. So I went ahead and put it in our goulash for that night. And that was the best goulash I have ever had. And this sauce tasted just like that goulash. So I think from now on, Having my own tomato sauce on the shelf is going to be a staple for me. After getting the tomato sauce into the canner, I went ahead and removed all of the juice from the apple pulp that we have been stewing on the stove. I think if I remember next time, I think I would like to cook these down a little bit longer than I did. I've made apple jelly a couple years back and it was a lot darker than this batch ended up turning out. And I kind of prefer it darker. I don't know why. Maybe it's just because I'm used to a dark jelly, but this turned out very light. And I don't know if it's because of the type of apples that I used or that I didn't cook the juice down long enough to get a darker color. I decided to take the apple pulp and dehydrate it as well. But unfortunately, this didn't turn out very well for me. It was just very, very sticky because of the sugar content in it. It was almost like a nasty fruit roll. So I really couldn't make it into a powder. I'm not really sure what to do with these apple scraps. If you have any suggestions, please let me know. I really would like not to waste all the stuff that comes from processing my food. Now here I'm just measuring out all of the apple juice that I got so that I can determine how many packs of pectin I need. So after getting the sugar in the pot and boiling the apple juice, which by the way, this recipe took a lot of sugar. I was amazed at how much. I, I guess I don't remember how much the last time I used, but I feel like it wasn't this much. I don't know if I used a low sugar recipe or what, but once it came to a boil, I added my two pectin packets and got those mixed in and then got it jarred up, lids on, and into the canner to process. Oh, and did I mention that I was racing against the clock here? My husband and I had actually bought tickets to go see a play, and so we were going to do a date night tonight. And I decided to do a canning project today, like several canning projects, as you see. So I am so glad that jelly only takes a few minutes to process because I needed to do two batches for this. So right as we needed to leave, I was pulling the last batch out. And that is all I got done for today. I really hope you enjoyed watching this. I really enjoy sharing and hearing back from you guys and hearing the input that you might have on what ideas I could do or a way to do things better. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks.